Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, I'm Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV. I'm here today with Corey Ward of Ward's Automotive to talk about all things automotive. Uh, Ward's Automotive is your local mechanic shop that you can go to. We've been using Ward's Automotive for a long time, so we would love to hear what Corey has to say about what the heck's going on. So, good morning, Corey. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, huh? So, you're a little excited about this? You, you bet. All right. All right. Well, I'll tell you about. Why don't we just get right into it? Why don't you tell us uh, what Ward's Automotive, what your philosophy is, what it is you do, what you work on? Let's just go ahead and let's get right into it. Okay. Um, generally, we're an automotive rep a, a general automotive repair shop. We work on all makes and models. We don't work on a lot of your European, but as far as your Asian and domestic, uh, we'll do those all day long. We do, however, specialize in your diesel engines, typically your Forge, your Chevrolets, and your Dodges with the Cummins, the Power Stroke, and the Duramax diesel. However, we do work on... Uh, your diesel pushers, we see a lot of those. Your freight liners, um, we do uh, some of those. We have the ability to communicate uh, as far as electronically to diagnose a particular problem. Oh, good. Uh, good. With all those, um, we just, we don't, uh, like I said, get into the European. We just don't right. see a lot of that need uh, in this area. Right, right. So the BMWs and the Mercedes. Audis, and, Volkswagens, things like that. And yeah. they're good rigs. Right. You know, but it's just uh, a lot of our folks are, they just have your basic uh, diesel yeah. or, or gasoline. We don't get extremely deep into the gasoline like we used to, mainly because they're lasting so much longer nowadays. Right. Um, but, yeah, we can handle just about anything. One of the things that you know has happened up in our area is we've had our dealerships just fold right and left. Yes. Um, have you found that the, because of that, that you're actually picking up more business? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as your general maintenance and things like that, absolutely. Right. However, um, unfortunately for the folks that are still under warranty, they still got to go back down the hill. Really? So a any warranty work you can't do? N no independent shop can do I see. You know, a manufacturer's warranty. Right, right. That's interesting. So, do you, th you ever see that changing? No. No. Yeah. No, so they, they don't want to let go of that. No. No. Yeah. No. yeah. Hmm, I'll be darned. Well. Um, okay. I'll tell you what. Let's go next. So let's talk about your credentials. How'd you get your education? How'd you start in mechanics? Uh, I've always had a a knack for it. I guess you could say, or maybe uh, a liking to it. You know. Uh, when I was little, that my parents have pictures of me helping my dad over the fender of a of a jeep, handing him tools, this, that, and the other. So I've always had an interest in it. As far as my education, um, I really haven't had a formal education in the automotive repair business. Um, I definitely have taken classes throughout the years, whether it be for diagnostics or analog brakes or particular diesel engine things of that nature. But I would say the majority of it I've learned from my dad in the School of Hard Knocks. Yeah, there you go. Now, what, what are the classifications? I noticed, uh, what is it, uh, ASE? Or? ASE. Yeah, and what is that? ASE is a, I guess you could call it an organization that basically you go down to, they used to have them at Sierra College where you go down, take a three, four day week course at the end of the week, then you would take a test geared to where, where you wanted to uh, excel in. But the only issues that I've had with ASC through the years is if you're good at taking tests, you know, you'll get that. Anyone could go down there and get it. But, yeah, right. you know, and there's nothing wrong, I should clarify that there's nothing wrong with ASC, but, you know, I'm learning every single day. Like, right. there, one of the guys that delivers parts uh, for his name's Jerry Mayfield. He has a quote. He was been in the repair business for years and years and years, and people used to ask, "So how long you been in the business?" And he would tell them, "Well, I started uh, twenty five years ago, but last week was my first week." <laughs> you Meaning go. that you're yeah. constantly learning. learning what's going on. I mean, there's new vehicles coming out, right. you know, every year, if not every six months yeah so you're constantly having to learn keep update uh updated with what is going on whether it be software uh or uh technical service bulletins as far yeah. as manufacturers will come out with 
they call them TSBs, a technical service bulletin, to where they will, it, a vehicle has will have an in, inherent problem. Uh-huh. And then we can get access to that and, and things like that, yeah. you know, but you're constantly learning. But uh, I've definitely learned uh, through trial and error. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, well, that, that's great. I mean, it's, that's all part of it, isn't it? And you, you seem to be fairly successful at that. So, well, we try. Yeah. Well, we all do. So, so Ward's Automotive is family run. Uh, did it start with your dad? How did it start? Uh, it started back in, I want to say it was 1978. I was five years old. Um, and my father used to work for a gentleman by the name of Bob Weaver uh-huh. um, over on the corner of Headington Road in Green Valley. And he had a he was a general auto, uh, repair shop, but he also had a side uh, four-wheel drive parts for your old Jeeps, hmm. Land Cruisers, things like that. Well, he wanted to sell it. My dad said, well, shoot, I'll buy his inventory. It was a smaller inventory. Right. And move that into my parents' garage. And every weekend he would work on uh, Jeeps and other vehicles. And then that kind of got busier and busier and the ball kept rolling. And uh, he ended up building the shop and uh, where it is now. And then when I got out of college, I uh, started working for him full time. Wow, right into it. So, but I've always been, I grew up with it. Right, right. You so, know. So you've been working on mechanics your whole life. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you started as a little kid, that's pretty much your whole yes. life. Yes, yes. I've so. had an interest in it, that's for sure. Well, I know you've been a wealth of information for me, so I, I can understand that. So, um, why don't you talk about the specialties? I know that you specialize in banks and pack, right? Mm-hmm, correct. Okay, so let's let's start out with banks. Why don't you tell us what banks power is all about and how it works? Okay, uh, your banks power system, uh, they are an aftermarket company uh, down in uh, Southern California. The simplest way I could put what a bank system does, whether it's for a diesel, gasoline, a motorhome, whether it's gas or diesel, is it will take the vehicle's stock, whether it be exhaust or intake, and it will improve the airflow. That's the main uh, objective we're trying to go after, and what they're trying to go after is trying to get as much air into the motor as fast as we can and trying to get it out as fast as we can. If we can achieve that, then our performance will go up, our economy will go up. Now, economy is a kind of a touchy thing especially nowadays with the cost of fuel being so high, um, there is absolutely the potential to get better fuel mileage, whether it's a gas or a diesel, but it's not always a guarantee. It's kind of all dependent on your right foot and how you're going to drive the vehicle. Right, right. You know, so th- does it actually give you more power? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. That is a given. Um, with the diesels, we can do different things uh, electronically that we plug into these to manipulate our timing our fuel pressure in result we are giving it more fuel and more power but we also want to compensate by giving it also a lot more air right all right so with the increase of efficiency of air that also helps with with the with the mileage as well absolutely yeah right so that that part the potential is always there to get better mileage yeah and for the most part folks do but i'd be fibbing to you if i said that i've had folks come back didn't see anything right right you know but well, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it could be minute. Um, so, what is it physically um, bolted onto the engine? What is it? What is it doing? Okay, um, let's just take for example, like uh, we'll say Ford Power Stroke. Right. Okay. Um, we will take uh, and remove this, the factory's stock exhaust system. Um, we will install a new, larger exhaust system that is what they call mandrel bent, meaning that. Uh, most of your diesels uh, or your aftermarket systems now have a four inch exhaust system, but it's a constant four inch diameter. Mm. So you could literally slide a four inch ball all the all way, way through, through it, as opposed to your factory exhaust systems where when they bend them, they put them in a brake. And so we go from, say, a four inch or a three inch, and then it's crushed at the corners. And it's impeding our airflow as we're going out. So why do they do that? Time. Oh, okay. It, it, a mandrel uh, brake for an exhaust, it, they're quite a, quite pricey. Mm-hmm. And probably nowadays they just stamp them, uh, the exhaust systems. And we can't get, 
I mean, they're getting better. Don't get me wrong as far as your factory. Uh, I mean, these vehicles are coming so powerful now. Yeah. But we, there's still things that we can do to improve upon them. Right. So does the bank include a chip? Yeah, uh, not always. I mean, you can you can buy complete kits, mm -hmm. you know, where it comes with uh, a chip or a tuner of some kind to give us more fuel. Um, you can buy separate parts, whether you, you just want to go after the exhaust system or you just want to go after the air intake system. You can buy them separately. Okay. You know, or okay. you can bundle them all up and put them all together as one. So does that, um, does that avoid a warranty? <laughs> um technically no it does not however um the dealership themselves they if something happened whether it was the rear end the transmission a flat tire for all like all that matters they have to prove that that aftermarket system caused the failure it can be pretty tough to do but nowadays it seems more so than ever i mean these dealerships they're struggling and when they take on a warranty claim, they're, I, I gotta be honest with you, they're gonna look for anything and everything to get out because it's an insurance policy. That's all it is. Right, right. And if they can get out of it, uh, then that's will, money huh? in their pocket. And they're playing a game to where, you know, let's say 10 folks show up for a warranty repair at the dealership. I wouldn't call them crooks and saying that they are going to deny them, but they are going to make it harder for them. And, probably only 30% of those people are going to put up a fight. Hmm. You know, the 70% is like, you know what, go ahead and just do it. I don't have time to They're do it. They're going to roll over on it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but to answer your question, no, it does not void your warranty. But we tell folks, because, you know, I'm not going to lie to them and say, no, absolutely, it does not. And you don't have to worry about a thing. If you're concerned the least bit about your warranty, don't do this. Just because I don't want to do anything that's going to give the customer any kind of grief. Right. Uh, down right. the road. So uh, do you see more people, uh, once the warranties are up, coming yes. in? Yeah, because at that point, you have Absolutely. nothing to lose, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, okay, so what about smog? Uh, all of, uh, I shouldn't say all, but I would say probably 95% of all the bank systems that are out there are uh, California smog approved. Okay. Meaning that mm -hmm. you bring it in, even if there is an issue, there is a website you can go to, on whether it's Air Resources Board or the Bureau of Automotive Repair, and it will list each individual kit, uh, bundle, whatever, and it has its own specific what they call a calif or excuse me, a uh, yeah California Air Resources Board executive order number, meaning that CARB recognized this kit as being legal in the state of California. I see. So and, they, and about ninety five percent of them have that. Gotcha. Okay. So so then that that's not as big a worry now. Everything seems to no, be smogging pretty well. Uh, no, it, and we're not doing radical adjustments. Right. Uh, to the ends, we're like I said uh, at the beginning. We're the main thing is we're just improving airflow. That that's the main key to a lot of these kits. So all right, tell me what pack brake is all about. Pack brake is an engine exhaust brake. Okay, we. It, it's basically we are installing a device that bolts on after the turbocharger and it's basically just a butterfly mm -hmm. that opens and closes and when it closes we are creating back pressure to the engine and therefore it's it, simplest of terms it'd be like when you flip the switch on and you're heading down a grade it's like throwing a parachute out behind you it does not bring the vehicle to a stop but it provides um anywhere from 40 to 50 percent braking assist yeah, to where you're not yeah. constantly tapping or stepping on the brakes we're going the brakes so we're I, I know I have a it's not an actual pack but I have a, a compression brake on my uh, mm -hmm. my truck and I tell you what it makes a big difference oh, I mean, it really really works well those are worth their weight in gold uh, yeah. in my opinion and the beauty of it is is to go back to smogging they're exempt right none right. of it matters right hey is speaking of uh, uh, exempt is 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 smog going to stay uh, exempt uh, on diesel? No. Right now, the law is uh, 1998 and newer. Vehicles that are under 14,000 pounds, so pretty much all of your three-quarter and one-ton pickups have to be smogged if they're 98 and newer every other year. Wow. Yeah. What about my Freightliner? Uh, you, what's your GVW on that? You're probably exempt yeah it's 26 oh you're you don't have to have a smog so 
all I care about, folks, is myself. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're exempt. Okay. So what? All right. Now, let's talk about w what are they looking for in smogging a diesel? Uh, as far as the smogging, it's it's a joke. It's a total it, joke. It would seem like it. I, but as far to answer that question, three things. Uh, first is what they call their visual inspection. Visual meaning that they want to make sure all the necessary smog components are there because most of your diesels nowadays are coming with a small handful of, you know, uh, catalytic converter, mm. uh, an EGR valve, mm. you know, things like that. They want to make sure that those things are present if they came from the factory. Okay. With one of those. There's a sticker right underneath your hood that says that this is a catalyst or a non catalyst. I've seen EGR, yeah. non EGR. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure that those components are still there. Um, that's part of our visual. And also, one small thing that they want to make sure that if you have installed any aftermarket parts, it does, <coughs> it is carb approved. Okay. 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 Uh, the second thing is a smoke test. Right. Where they will either have a guy sitting out the side looking at the tailpipe and they they will snap the throttle three times um and they will look to see how much smoke well it's it's a very subjective test to the person who is doing it right but so it's actually a visual test to see how much smoke yes and it, as long as it dissipates within a certain amount of time i, I want to say it's is it three or five seconds okay <laughs> well where one guy might think that's not a lot, another guy could say, "Well, that is." I'm not. Neither one of them are wrong, but that's how they are interpreting. Right, right. There's too much of a gray area as far as this smog test is concerned. And then the last thing, which is a no fooler, no brainer, nothing, is they plug into the state computer right. to your uh, onboard data link connector. Right. And the only reason they're doing that is to make sure that there's no codes. You know, if you're been driving down the road, I'm sure you're seeing your check engine light come on. If your check engine light is on it will not pass mm -hmm. period right so and, and that's it huh. and that check engine line could be for anything not necessarily a smog related issue uh, you hit the nail on the head yeah okay so that's a problem so you probably get a lot of people come in and hey my check engine lights oh, on help yes. me mm -hmm. yeah when in yeah. years past you know say for example they could have came in my check engine lights on and it's all going back to say the glow plug system mm -hmm. okay glow plugs are doing nothing as far as when you after you get all they're there for is to get the engine started when it's cold right it has nothing to do with once it started right they're off right but it a glow plug failure or a glow plug fault code with your check engine light on it will prevent you from getting your registration sticker <sighs> always something isn't it Jeez, that's pretty good um so let's see here uh, how is it you know, I known your dad for a little while longer than I've known you, mm -hmm. and uh, your dad's a bit of a curmudgeon. Hey, Larry, you're a bit of a curmudgeon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how is it working with your dad? Oh, it's great. Yeah. No, yeah. we get along well. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because we're both alike in a lot of ways, and sometimes you will see with a father and a son or mother and a daughter, if they're too much alike, they're constantly button heads. Yeah, yeah. It's not like that with us. Yeah. Uh, we get along great, and probably why we've been able to but it last as long well your dad's pretty simple he says you're the boss so that that works out really well huh <laughs> well, i don't know about that but oh gee many crickets so um how many people do you think you're servicing in the county Ouch. that's a tough one i know i'm, throw, that, I'm throwing a curve at you i you know rob i don't know per se it's we've always kind of tried to treat it as take one customer at a time right you know and hopefully you do right by that customer and they will tell someone else you know and then they will tell someone else I we try to pride ourselves as being as you know honesty is the key right you know if I don't know I am NOT about to sit there and try to buffalo you right and pull the wool over your your eyes and say well it's this this that you know, I'm tell you I don't know you know you know and isn't that a shame because so many independent uh uh, mechanics have gotten such a bad rap through the years because they've done just that. Oh, this the trade you know. has a very bad name yeah. in that sense. Yeah, you know. So, and look, you, you, you try to do your best to please everybody, 
but you're never going to succeed. Oh, no, it's impossible. You know, but, I learned that years ago. You can't please everybody. Can you give it, give it your best. That's you about know? all you can do. So. And I think honesty in your business is really, really important. And so um, it's, it's good to know that you're going to be honest and upfront and not try to BS anybody as, as far as what things are going to do and not do. I'll go one step further. I Not only our business, I think in any business. Yeah. If you can be honest with it, I'd much rather have a guy. Let, let's go back to pack break, for example. They're not the cheapest kit out there as far as when, the, when their exhaust brakes are concerned. And I'd be lying to you if I said that there was never had an issue, you know, with, I mean, it's put together by human beings, installed by a human being, things are going to happen. But if something does, they're the type of company that will, just like us, when you need it, how soon you need it, where do you need it? No questions asked, not this old song and dance of, okay, did you do this? Did you do that? Well, let, let me look at the warranty and you're oh see you're one month out they're not like that at all and we're not either you know uh so that's the kind of stuff that i look for as far as you know when we go to buy the parts that we do we try to get the best uh that money can buy to try to prevent uh your comebacks you right know, say oh yeah yeah you Recalls, put an alternator right? yeah. or, or an alternator or a water pump whatever right um you try to put the best that there is within reason right so you try to limit those yeah you yeah. know um and you want it to last and you want absolutely. that customer to be happy and you want them coming back and mm -hmm. you know everything that the normal business wants that's exactly what you want too and um i suppose you are like most uh businesses in Colorado county is most of your customers come from word of mouth yeah oh uh 90 percent easy yeah yeah yeah, that's the only way to do it, and and uh, isn't that nice? Because that yes. means you got very happy people, and that's well, you know, we are spoiled to death. I have to say, with our clientele, I yeah, mean, you and your wife have been coming uh, to us for years. Your daughter brings her stuff. Yeah, um, they know, and I don't mean to toot my horn, but they know what they're going to get when they come there. Right, and it's like that. And so when we deal, I, I've always liked to develop a rapport. Mm -hmm. you know with our customers right you know i would think of them more as a friend than a client or a customer you know i'm working on customer a's car today right. you know, that type of thing you know how are you doing how's the kids doing you know yeah, yeah. Th it, it's a warm feeling i you know I, nobody likes to have to take their car in but it's just like going to the doctor it, it's going to break something's going to happen absolutely and i feel so comfortable uh you know to to going towards automotive and just dropping my vehicle off and saying, hey, you know, there's something wrong. What's going on here? And I know I'm going to get an honest answer. And that's not easy these days. So, well, thank you. Yeah. So we so we really appreciate that that type of service. And, and um, why don't we talk about, we're pretty much at near the end of this. Um, you have a website. Did you know you have a website? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, for those of you that would like to get a hold of uh, Corey and Larry Ward, uh, you can go to wardsauto.net, and most of the information that you need is right there, but the best way to get a hold of them, of course, is to give them a phone call. And Corey, what is that number? Uh, the number is area code 530-626-5588. Okay. <coughs> and your hours? Uh, we are open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, um, and then obviously closed on the holidays. Right. So I can't come see you on Thursday? No. No. Okay. So this was our Thanksgiving event. So. Yeah. <laughs> so no. that's good. That's good. Tell you what, let's give you, you, you know, give us give us a minute, look in the camera, tell us anything you want to tell us about Ward's Automotive that we haven't talked about already, and we'll get this thing wrapped up. Uh, we would love to, for you to come by at the very least. Look at what we have to offer. We have a very family-friendly uh, business. Our cats, our dogs, our kids are running around, and... We will treat your car as, as if we would treat our own, or more importantly, my grandmother. So if that means anything to you, come on by and take a look. I appreciate that. Hey, and I appreciate you visiting Old Guy Tech TV on Automotive Day. Maybe we'll do some more of these. Corey's got a lot of things going on, and I'm sure there's other things we can get him to talk about. But uh, if you're looking for an independent mechanic uh, in the El Dorado County area, please visit uh, Wards Auto. Again, that's uh, wardsauto.net on their website. And one more time, I want to thank you for joining us. Without you, we get nowhere. We really wish you would pass the word along to other people about our shows. And we have a survey online right now. 
Uh, go look at that survey. It has a little bit to do with net neutrality, but it's called SOPA that we're dealing with. We'd like you to take that poll account. And all I can say is thank you very much. Hey, listen, you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we really enjoy it. And, Corey, thank you for coming. Thank we you really very appreciate much. It. it was wonderful having you, and we'll see all of you later. Bye-bye. This episode of Old Guy Tech TV is brought to you by Windfall. Windfall, all the resources for El Dorado County. Everybody needs a windfall. Don't forget to ask about the free classified ads. Windfall is available to assist you in promoting your business through affordable and effective advertising. Call Windfall at 530-621-1698 or send an email to info at shopthewindfall.com. And thank you, Winfall, for supporting Old Guy Tech TV. We'll see you next time.